Hi there, and let's take a closer look at the render settings window. Starting from the very top, we have a set of presets that you can access for the most common workflows. This includes advanced visual effects workflows, outputting to popular video hosting websites like YouTube and Vimeo, both of which come with a drop down arrow that allow you to switch from HD ready to full HD resolutions. And on top of that, we also have a few XML and audio workflow friendly file formats. Underneath that, you can see the file name that your project currently has. You'll be able to change that later on. And underneath that, the location where your video will end up once it's exported. To change the location, click on the word Browse and select the folder on your computer. Further down the line, we have the ability to choose between exporting this video as a single self-contained clip or as a series of individual clips. So you can almost think of it as a dailies workflow. Then we choose between one of three categories to indicate our options for video, audio, and for the file name. With video, you get to indicate that you want to include video in the export, not just audio. You get to select your file format, which is the container or the file extension. And underneath that, you get to pick the codec language in which your video is compressed or written in. Next, we have our resolution and frame rate controls, which ideally should reflect your project resolution and frame rate, but which you can change as long as you keep the scale of your resolution the same and the multiple of your frame rate the same. If you've been working with 4K footage this whole time, but you've downscaled your image to 1080p for faster playback, the render settings is where you indicate to the program that you want to switch back to the 4K. If you were using qualifiers or power windows or any kind of animation inside of the color page, those will all be upscaled accordingly as well. Beneath that we have our quality options or data rate. Automatic allows you to choose between fairly abstract terms, but you also have the ability to manually type in the data rate that you'd like to export your project as. And this is extremely useful if you've got a limitation on your file size. The keyframes option allows you to indicate how often you want the codec to grab an iframe when compressing into H.264. Keep in mind that these settings will change based on the type of codec and format that you select beforehand. In the advanced settings, you'll be able to indicate your pixel aspect ratio, and the data levels allow you to indicate the bit depth of the colors in your image. Usually the software is pretty good at detecting it itself, but if you find that your final render ends up looking a lot darker or a lot lighter than what you saw in DaVinci Resolve, you might want to experiment by exporting alternative versions, one as video and one as full or film, and see if either one of these will produce a result that matches the one in DaVinci Resolve. Lastly, we've got a few basic controls, such as indicating whether you want to include the data burn-in that you created on the color page. You can choose to use the optimized media that you might have generated in the media page. And you could also use the render cache that you had also generated while working on the project. Enable flat pass is just another way of saying that you want to turn off all the grading on your nodes. You can then also choose to disable your sizing options and force your sizing and debayering to the highest quality. Back at the top, we just have a few more minor controls left. In the middle, we have the audio tab in which you can indicate whether you want to include audio in your export or not. You once again can indicate the codec that you'd like to use, as well as the amount of channels you want associated with the video file and the bit depth of the audio. The higher the bit depth, the higher the quality. You can also choose whether you want your channels to be output onto a single track or whether you want to have one per channel. In the file menu, you can indicate the name of your video export using either the custom name bar or trusting the timeline name. And in the case of something like image sequence exports, you might want to indicate how many digits you want in the file name. The last control is for render speed, which is automatically set to maximum, which is not necessarily 100, it just means the maximum that your workstation is capable of. But you could choose to push it further or to ease the load. Just keep in mind that this might result in issues or even a crash. The symbols at the bottom indicate how much space you currently have available on your workstation and how much there will be after you've finished your render. When you're satisfied with the selection that you have in your timeline, you can click on Add to Render Queue to throw the job onto the queue on the right hand side of the workspace. And we'll be looking at that next. Thank you for watching and until next time.